Okay, this video is entitled The Incomi in the System and the Slave Trade, and we're going to kind of go through both of those as separate entities and kind of how they all relate to uh, systemic racism that kind of existed back then and still today, obviously. So um, here's the beginning of the Incomi in the System. Let's define the Incomi in the System first. It's a system used by Spain to uh, control labor forces. They use it in their country, they brought it over with them to the New World between the Spanish missionaries, explorers, and conquistadors, right? So the encomenderos are the ones that were in charge of those encomiendas, and they divided up the work over in the New World amongst the uh, Native Americans, um, and then those Native Americans would get protection and Christianity kind of as payment. So they were getting protected um, from people that they needed protection from. I mean, it seemed kind of weird. Like, they didn't need protection until the Europeans came, but, you know, you get it. Um, it's, it's very ironic how the Europeans handled and, and treated these guys. So the Native Americans did all the farming. We've talked about it already, the tobacco and sugar cane especially. The first official encomienda in the New World was in 1502, and over time the treatment of Native Americans um, got worse and worse and worse, and um, eventually um, the encomiendas began to look a lot like slavery. So an encomienda system, um, as it appeared to look more and more like slavery, the uh, kind of once promised protection and Christianity turned into threats and injuries and cruelty and abuse. Um, and that was what motivated the Native Americans to work. Or that was what the Europeans used to mo motivate the Native Americans to work, right? So Balatome de las Casas um, owned a plantation. He lived in Spain and he came over to visit his encomienda. Um, and he was so horrified by how the Native Americans were treated that he released everybody. And then he spent his whole life... Um, fighting against the inhumane treatment of the Native Americans in the Encomiendas. New laws passed by the uh, Spanish king in 1542 did send regulations down to kind of make it um, a little bit better on the Native Americans, if you will. But of course, when your king passes laws that are hundreds of miles away in Spain, it takes a while to get over to the Americas. Um, and so obviously this, this didn't do too much. Ultimately, they were outlawed in the 1700s. And this encomienda system really did lead to a deep-seated uh, racial hierarchy in the New World, meaning that Europeans began to believe they were better um, than the people that they found or discovered, I guess, or met in the New World. So let's talk about kind of the other work labor system, the Atlantic slave trade. Um, slavery... Oh. Mark Rodriguez, please come to the front office. So they're just Mark talking. Rodriguez, we'll just wait for her to finish. To right? And there you go. All right, slavery had been around for hundreds of years. It wasn't something new, um, but the Portuguese started to bring Africans over to the New World in the early 1600s. Remember, many of those Native Americans had died, and so there wasn't a ton of them to do the work anymore, so they had to find a new labor force, and they used Africans to do that. Um, other European countries began to see how much money Spain was making, right? And they wanted a piece of that action, but they needed their own labor force, right? So they had to bring people over. Eventually, over 10 million plus Africans were sold into slavery or traded into slavery from Africa through the Atlantic slave trade. Um, the African kingdoms actually had a lot of prisoners from their time of war um, and conquering, and so and also criminals. They used criminals as well, and those are the the slaves or the Africans they traded to the Europeans as slaves, um, and they would trade for things like weapons and other different goods. So. This obviously led to increased competition in Africa, so the African kingdoms kind of started to um, you know, conquer more and try to find more prisoners and um, different criminals. Uh, pun punishments, there we go, that's the word I was looking for. Punishments changed to be a little bit harsher um, so that they would go to prison and those were the people the kingdoms traded over as slaves. And then just like in the Native American, slaves were used on the plantations. Um, to work the land and stuff like that. They did have other tasks, but for the most part, they were working the land. <clears throat> so the Middle Passage, that became kind of an infamous um, term, and it's used to describe the, the, the route from Africa over to the Americas, and it's kind of the life of the um, African slaves on that ship and how they were treated. Right, so nearly, or roughly around, I've seen numbers as low as 20%, I've seen numbers as high as 30%, let's settle in the middle at about a quarter. 25% of Africans on these ships died from exposure to disease, being thrown overboard, um, suicide, starvation, whatever the case was, horrible conditions. They were packed side by side, hundreds of slaves on a ship, um, forced to endure that travel on an incredibly hot, sweltering, you know, very uh, stinky, just 
un unimaginable uh, place for them to be. They were essentially given four square feet of space, um, and that's essentially the size of this board right here. It wasn't as wide, it'd be a little bit longer uh, to fit the person in it, but then they just kind of packed everybody in that. So you can imagine, you can fit a lot of people um, on a ship if they only get four square feet of space. Um, it's just really ridiculous how this was all set up. Um, once landing in the New World, the slaves were sold um, into slavery and they were forced to work the land. Um, the Africans were obviously viewed as property once they became slaves and were treated as such. So they were traded, they were abused, they were branded. Um, there, there really was no um, acknowledgement of their humanity, right? It was stripped from them during this process here of the Middle Passage. So let's look at the impact. We know the slave impact in the United States, right? We've talked about that a lot as far as it led to a civil war um, and ultimately that law of slavery. And then you had civil rights as people fought for um, uh, equal, equal treatment in the law. Um, but let's talk about specifically from Africa, then we'll kind of come back to that right there. So Africa lost millions of their own people. Um, the African kingdoms got uh, traded 10 plus million people over to the new world as slaves. Um, and so they needed more slaves to keep up with the demand. So in order to get more people as slaves to trade, you had to conquer more territories, which meant kingdoms were fighting um, and people were dying and men were being shipped over as slaves. The majority of slaves at that time were men. Um, so this led to increased violence and instability. And as a result of that instability, Europe ended up colonizing and conquering a lot of Africa anyway. So Africa really did suffer a huge impact from this. And, and some historians would argue that they're still um, reeling from the effects today, especially with a lot of violence and instability in different parts of Africa. So also the Atlantic slave trade led to an embedded development of racism in the New World because Native Americans and Africans were viewed as lesser humans. They were considered biologically inferior and viewed as property. So when you're not viewed as a human, despite the fact that you are a human, that was how the Europeans um, kind of justified themselves logically that they could have this horrible institution to, to work their land. When, you, when they would kind of rationalize themselves that these Africans, these Native Americans, were biologically inferior, obviously that's um, an incredibly ridiculous point of view, but this right here really uh, set a deep mark in the United States history and other parts of the world's history as far as a systemic racism that a lot of people are still working to overcome today.